As you guys know, we got uh, Southern Illinois this week. Uh, let's see two teams that uh, both had uh, high expectations uh, prior to the season and uh, in very similar circumstances uh, as far as conference standings and uh, you know the way the first half of the season has, has went. And uh, I think it'll be in for a, a good ball game. They uh, did some really impressive things last week, uh, really all year, but uh, last week against North Dakota State. Uh, you know, didn't give North Dakota State a first down until late in the third there. Uh, held them to 60 yards rushing. Uh, really did a great job. And uh, I think they've improved uh, tremendously on defense. Um, you know, I think their defensive line uh, is very active, uh, playing much more physical. They run a lot better than they did last year. Um, I think the linebacking group is obviously well coached and fitting things a lot better than uh, maybe than they had, had in the past. So uh, I think we'll have our hands cut off for you there. And then on, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, probably uh, got two of the better offensive <coughs> linemen in the league. Uh, tight end, you know, he's a physical guy, probably blocks as well as most offensive linemen do. And then they got the big back there with Hampton uh, out of Iowa. And uh, you can tell that he's been lifting some weights and running the ball hard. And, Runs the zone play well, runs the stretch play well, runs the power play well. So, uh, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us there. And I think the quarterback's doing a good job managing the game and uh, seeing much improved on offense, really, too, from last year. So it'll be a, uh, another wild game here in the Missouri Valley. And we look forward to going, going and playing them, though. So that's kind of where we're at. Coach, uh, the players talked about. Um, yeah, I need to have a, more of a sense of urgency and every possession going out and really feeling like they got to go execute and get things done. Can you just speak to that and, and your message to them in that regard? Well, you know, obviously we had a chance on uh, Monday to visit um, as a group. And I think the glaring thing that continues to show up is, is, is these games for us have come down to basically you can identify about four or five plays. You can really identify one play. But, you know, uh, and it could be either side of the ball. And what sometimes you don't realize is, is that four or five plays might be in the first or second quarter. Who knows when it could be? But it could be affecting the outcome of the game. And, uh, you know, and then also something that we addressed was is we've had some momentum where we, get, we jump out and get momentum, and then we turn around and give it right back. And uh, we addressed that, you know. We're going to try to incorporate some things uh, starting today in practice, uh, trying to recreate that environment and uh, trying to get us to finish the game. Um, you know, we have a 28-21 lead. You got the ball. You got four minutes left. Defense got two, three timeouts, and we're going to see if we can put it away. You know, on offense, defense, you got to get a stop. You know, so we got to. You know, we have a young group. That is by no means an excuse. But we have to uh, walk and walk them through some things like that, and hopefully, then when it happens in the game, it'll be good. Um, you know, I've made a real conscious effort uh, as a coach that I wanted to be great on third down and be great in the red zone, and we do that. I mean, repetitively, all the time. Well, you know, you kind of get what you emphasize. Well, I probably I need to do a better job of emphasizing. That, that four minute offense, you know, we did in camp, we did a bunch of scrimmages, you know, but it's not something that really anywhere I've ever been in my coaching that you work on a regular basis during the course of the week, four minute offense. Well, I've just discovered that maybe we need to start working on a little bit more four minute offense and during the course of the week. And even though I've never done it anywhere I've been, all the places I've been and coaches I've been with, maybe we'll, we'll try something like that just to get us over the, over that hump there. Coach, you said after Saturday, you kind of you might want to a spark might need to you might need to shift some guys around, put some guys in new spots, and uh, see if you can't spark something or find some guys that fit into a position. Is that something you're going to well, try we, to do this week? We made some depth chart changes. Um, you know, we got uh, Jeremy Edwards moved him back in there, uh, moved Garner back in there. Uh, looking at Scott Sentner a little bit also helped us out a little bit. Sam linebacker, uh, but also playing in the back end, and then. Uh, 
we're going to go back with uh, Josh Lee at the field corner and then uh, Devontae Davis at the boundary corner and uh, just try to get a little more consistency and uh, also going to try to you know continue to, to do some things keep expanding um, you know we've been kind of uh, I don't know if you'd say conservative is, is the approach but we're going to start throwing more stuff at these guys and holding their feet to the fire a little bit more so we can uh, be more multiple and uh, it's time and uh, we need to do it. Coach, what is your message to your guys knowing that maybe the backs are against the wall a little bit in the standings but everything kind of is still out there that you wanted to accomplish when the season began. What do you convey to your guys in regards to that and, and, and what they want to accomplish? Well, you know, I think the, the first thing is, is uh, everyone here in this room has had adversity and uh, you know, someone's going to get a phone call today and get bad news and it's really how you handle it, how you regroup, it's part of life. That's what's so great about this game of football is, is really how you handle it and uh, we've had some adverse times um, since I've been here. Um, we've lost, I mean, a lot of conference games by seven points or less, you know, and if we can find a way to start closing the gap and winning those games, we're going to have a chance to have a really good football team. And uh, But I think adversity develops character. I think it develops toughness and uh, mentality. And, you know, these kids come back, they respond, they've been positive. Um, we, our coaching staff's told them that we believe in them. We work hard. We bust our tail. We give them a game plan. And I think they have a confidence level in knowing that it's, if this guy would line up and do what he's supposed to, doing what he's supposed to do, we'd probably have a different outcome. And, you know, uh, you know, you got to line up, right? You know, and it, it's whether you're in the flow of the game, heat of the moment, whatever the case may be, you got to be able to get, get that done. And, uh, you know, it's be completely different if, you know, we didn't have a guy or schematically we were getting out schemed. You know, it'd be completely different. But that's not the case. Uh, so that's what's really disheartening is, is you know, you're not, you know, it's uh, something you have to grow up and say, hey, uh, I'm not going to be the result of these four or five plays. I'm not. It's not going to be on me. I'm going to do my job, and uh, we've emphasized that. And they've been good. We had a great practice yesterday. And uh, you know, we got we, we, we have a good foundation of, of guys here, players, coaches are committed to doing things the right way, and we're not going to deviate from that. How tough is it to be? You've never used youth or inexperience. You know, you have young guys playing defensively. How tough is it for you to be patient with these guys, knowing they're going to have growing pains along the way? It is a process. Well, a lot of people tell me that, you know, but uh, I just I, I'm not I'm not a guy that makes excuses. You know, I think if you you let yourself make excuses, then I think you that's okay, and it's not okay. Um, is it reality? Maybe, you know, but I mean, I'm not going to give in to it. Uh, I think we have to continue to press forward. I mean, there are high expectations for this program, youth or not, you know, and, uh, you know, I believe that we are going to meet those expectations. Uh, when? I, I can't tell you that, but we're going to continue to work towards them. Uh, we're not working towards trying to win six or seven games a year. I mean, that's that's not the standard here. And that will never change. Uh, we can't settle, you know. Are you going to settle for, uh, you know, a Chevy Tahoe when maybe you could have an Escalade? You know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be. Don't settle. And, uh, you know, if you settle and you're accepting being average and you're not, uh, you don't have an opportunity to be as good as you can be, you know. Um, yeah, it, it, it applies to everything you do in life. You just can't settle. Are you saying a Chevy Tahoe is average? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm driving right now. <laughs> but I, I, I do love the Tahoe. I guess my point is, is you know, you have to continually, uh, you know, reach, reach, reach higher, you know, and strive. I mean, everyone in this room, I'm sure, has very high expectations of where you want to be in ten years from now, five years from now, three years from now. And it's no different for a football player or a football team or anything. Anytime you become content with where you are or what you've done, I don't think you, you have a chance to, to grow or get better. You know, and That's just the way I've been my whole life. And, uh, 
you know, I started Division Two, and I've had a lot of good fortune. And uh, just keep working hard, doing things right, sawing wood, chopping wood. You know, we're going to have our day. I mean, there's no question we're going to have our day. It's just right now you're, we're being tested. And uh, we're going to pass the test. We're not giving in. I mean, uh, I've been on the floor many times in my life. And uh, I'll get right back up just like our team will. Coach, with six to go and, you know, where you are in the standings, does it, is there a playoff-type atmosphere, must-win type atmosphere from here on out to, uh, to get to where you want to be at the end of the year? You know, I think it, it's definitely it feels that way, you know. I think it's just an exciting game that you got two teams that have, that have had high expectations, you know. Um, I think our high expectations are self-imposed. Uh, I think their high expectations are – you know, the amount of returning players that they have and the success that they've had in the most recent five years. But uh, it's, it's, you know, and, and you know, we, uh, we had some good fortune last year and beat, beat them. So that's on their mind too. And uh, we're going to their place. So it'll be an electric environment. I know it's not fancy as far as uh, records, but it really is going to be a, a pretty aggressive game. I mean, you got two really good backs matched up. Uh, you got a, uh, an outstanding defense uh, against some, you know, against our offense. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of unique matchups when you look at the two teams, especially. Uh, I think people recognize how good Southern Illinois is last week when they look what they did against North Dakota State. Uh, and if you know, I can show you some clips against Ole Miss. Ole Miss had some good fortune on some plays, but they they uh, they matched up with Ole Miss pretty well, and obviously I have some familiarity with those guys. But you're dealing with the, uh, the road experience any differently this week than you have in the past. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. I am going to change some things up uh, as far as when we arrive uh, there. I'm going to uh, go to a high school and uh, do some stuff there as far as a, a more of a stretch, intense workout type thing. Um, I'm going to do some things different in the evening than I've done in the past um, just to try to, I don't know, change it up. Good way to say it. If you, uh, if you look at this matchup, statistically, um, it looks like the, the, if there's an edge, Southern Illinois' defensive numbers are, are better than yours. Is defense where this game will be won, or is it up to your offense? You know, I think, um, you know, since we've been here, uh, it's kind of been a feeling that, uh, you know, offensively, you know, I think we've kind of come to become accustomed to us scoring 35 or 42 points. You know, that's kind of what we've all become accustomed to somewhat. And then when we get held down by somebody, or they do a decent job of containing us, or we self-destruct, which is primarily what we do most of the time when we don't achieve that, is, uh, you know, but their defense is significantly improved. You know, last year we ran the ball 56 times against them, and uh, their defense is significantly improved. And I think that's the matchup. Uh, that's a big matchup. And, uh, you know, I think, you, you know, whose defense plays better really is probably going to be the, the one that has the nod. You got to, I was just going to ask a follow-up to uh, to what degree do you think your defense can be significantly or uh, improved by Saturday afternoon? Well, I think the thing is, is, you know, at, at some point when you kind of haven't had the success that you want, Kind of getting tired of getting, getting, giving up a game here and there, a play here and there, and you know that it's silly. Uh, you know it's a silly mistake. It's a, it's a lack of focus maybe on a play. I think at some point, uh, you know, you just get tired of it and say, I'm not going to, we're not going to continue let this happen. You know, and I think that's got to come from within the players. You know, uh, coaches yelling and screaming. You know, I mean, at some point, uh, you just got to say, hey, you know, that's it. It's done. We're not, we're not doing this anymore. You know, 11 guys do your job.